Hi, everyone. This is DJ Jam and Joe Damiano. I'm here on this beautiful wintry day of November. Well, at least in my state. So let me introduce you to my guest today. His name is Jonathan Pritchard. Jonathan Pritchard is a highly sought after consultant and speaker specializing in the area of applied psychology and life and business. His client list includes Fortune 500 companies like BP, State Farm, United Airlines, and more. He is the founder of the international consulting company, The House Storm Group, with his trained teams to improve their sales, negotiation, and presentation skills on six of the seven continents. His expertise comes from his background traveling the world as a mentalist, a unique type of entertainer specializing in mind reading tricks. He is, he is also dedicating his career to become the num top number one mentalist in the world and was on America's Got and competed on America's Got Talent. And you will find the, his links at the bottom of this video so you can connect. Welcome, Jonathan. Hey, thank you very much. Really glad to be here, man. So my first question I have for you today is what exactly is a mind reader? A mind reader is a kind of mystery performer that specializes in apparently reading the minds of audience members. It's very convincing. It's a lot of fun. At the end of the day, there are natural explanations for how it all works. I don't claim to have supernatural paranormal abilities or be psychic, really. It's all applied psychology, showmanship, and moxie to just have the gumption of standing in front of a room full of people and, and have fun. Okay, next question I have for you is, if you suddenly gained the ability to time travel, what's the first thing you would do? Oh, man. I kind of want to go back and see dinosaurs. But that would be a risky first jump, I would think. <laughs> you know that that might be putting too much faith in the system i might i might go back maybe five minutes see how that goes then go in farther and farther jumps back in time i i'm not sure i'd want to go forward in time because i don't i don't want to jump into a destroyed earth and, and not have a way to get back Okay, next question is, what is your greatest personal achievement? Ooh, my greatest personal achievement, I would say, are my friends. Because I'm friends with the coolest people on the planet who do the most amazing stuff. And the fact I get to hang out with them, talk to them all the time, I think is is the best thing that I've spent my time doing. Anything else kind of pales by comparison. So I'd say the the people in my life are definitely my highest achievement. And if you can, talk about your experience on America's Got Talent. It was, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. I like to kind of share so some of the details that that I think people may not realize about making television. So it, it kind of makes it sound like it was worse of an experience than it actually was because it was months long and it it's intense. It's really intense making that kind of television show because you're there when you're filming, they are trying to get as much done in as little time as possible. So they are looking to film two or three episodes, maybe four episodes in one afternoon. So then you wind up doing the same thing four or five times in the same day, and you don't know where the cameras are when you're just hanging out. So you, you kind of are always in the back of your head, kind of aware that somebody might be filming you. 
So then you're on your best behavior the whole time and you you're trying to sit up straight. You're trying not to pick your nose, right? You're, you're trying to make sure that they don't catch you doing anything like that because you don't want that to be the two seconds of footage that makes it out to broadcast. So then it's very high stakes. It's, it's emotionally exhausting to go through that. And you're talking with a lot of other nervous performers who are talkers. So you are trying to deal with your own, your own emotions, your own energy levels and being really anxious and manage the emotions of the other performers that are talking to you because they're nervous and, and you're trying to walk that balance of, I don't want to be rude. I do need to focus on, <laughs> on what I'm doing. I, I kind of, I don't have a lot of bandwidth to talk about your gig right now. So it's, it's just kind of weird all the different directions that you can be pulled while you're going through the process of making a television show. So it's, it's months of work for that one second to 10 minutes that you get of airtime for an appearance on national television. So it's, it's really exciting. It's also really important to know what it is that you are signing up for and what you're about to go through so that you can manage your expectations a little better. Okay, next question I have for you is, where do you see yourself in 10 years? Hmm, in 10 years, I don't, probably still in North Carolina, that's, I moved here as of the time that we're recording this, I moved here about four months ago. It's where I grew up before I went off to college and started touring the world. So it's kind of where I'm familiar with and and just moved back because I've lived in Kentucky, Florida, Texas, Illinois, um, in Orlando, Fort Lauderdale, Austin, Chicago. So I've lived in big cities. I got I got uh, kind of homesick for the mountains. So I, I went, you know what? I'm going to go live in the trees for a while. So in 10 years, I'll probably still be here. I'll still probably be writing books, working with companies, doing interesting stuff, probably working more with crypto and integrating VR, AR into my life performances. So I'm excited about the, the horizon of opportunity for technological innovation for performance. So that'll be interesting to see what's happening in 10 years. Okay. Um, next question are is, um, who are your heroes? Oh man, the the person that comes to mind first when you ask that is James Randi. He he was a a mentor and a friend of mine for about fifteen years, and working with him is where I I got my start in showbiz really, because. He had a million dollar challenge to anybody who claimed to have genuine psychic powers of whatever flavor. And I, I helped kind of process and manage applications for that challenge, which means I got to make sure that the people who were applying were following the steps, clearly telling us what they could do under what conditions, with what accuracy does this work 100% of the time? Does this work 45% of the time? What 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 needs to be happening? Does this work when it's raining? Does it not work, right? So you have to work out all those details. So he was kind of a, a champion of, of reality and clear understanding of how the world works in order to make better and better choices for life. So he's he's the first he's the first person that comes up when you ask about heroes that's it james randy 
Okay, next question is, what is your greatest fear? My greatest fear? Hmm. I, I think it is not helping enough people, which is kind of a weird one that has only gotten stronger the older I get. Kind of the older I get, the more time I've spent on planet Earth, the more I appreciate how much other folks have invested in me and shared knowledge and experience with me that's helped me out a lot. And I don't want to get older and realize I could have done that for somebody else too. So that's why my days I want to spend as as much as possible focused on helping as many people as I can. Okay, next question is, what do you do in your spare time? I, I have a daily uh, kind of habit or hobby, I guess, of learning Mandarin Chinese. That was one I picked up about two years ago. And I thought, you know, I want to learn another language. So why not learn one that opens up potential relationships with more than a billion people? All right, let me let me try that out. So it's slow going. I'm not a fast learner <laughs> by any means. So a little a little time every day just to learn one character or or another. And I make sure that I've got a uh, exercise regimen. So I work out about three times a week on average there, read books on Neoplatonic philosophy and Archimedes and, and that kind of a thing. I paint on my iPad. My, my art degree from college comes in handy for that. So I do that to kind of stay sane. But really, it's a lot of it is um, I don't have much free time. Most of it is dedicated to coming up with new shows, working with clients, spending time with my wife and family, and, and making sure that, that I'm kind of keeping my relationships up. Uh, after all of that, working out and learning Mandarin, there's not much of the day left. <laughs> so I might I might watch one or two episodes of a of a TV show with with my wife. Um, right now, we're working through uh, Stargate, so there are a lot of seasons of that. So we've we've got plenty ahead of us. Okay, um, looking at this again. Okay, um, how do you prepare? Um, um, to be a mentalist when people hire you? Like, what's your thought process? Mm -hmm. before, before they book me, I need to know for sure what's the event that they're planning. Is this somebody's birthday party? Is this a child's birthday party? Then I know for sure I'm not a good fit for that. So I make sure what's the event they think they want me for and to make sure I'm a good match for that. Then if it's a kind of event that works for me, like a, a gala or an awards banquet or a, a trade show, something like that, then I want to know what they want out of that event. Are they looking to make a name for themselves? Are they looking to impress some VIP guests? Are they looking to get uh, more leads out of this trade show? So I need to know what success looks like to them. Then I need to know who those people are that are going to be at this experience. Is this open to the public? Is this a parent's weekend at a college? Are these buyers, customers, whatever, so that I can then design my show to communicate what my client needs to have happen. 
right? So if they need leads, well, then I need to communicate the right kind of person that would benefit from what my client does. So I, before I ever even show up, I need to know the big picture that I'm fitting into, how they see me helping that, that experience go well, and what they think success looks like so that I can know whether or not I can help that happen. So then when I go do the show, it's pretty straightforward because I'm, I'm excited to do what I do and I've already planned out the show. I have some places where I can customize and they're, they're kind of uh, Mad Libs style where I can pull out the old thing and plug in the client's industry or the client's competitor or the client's name and know that it, it will be customized to them without me having to learn a completely new skill set. And then that way, I don't have to spend a lot of mental energy trying to remember what's coming next. I can just focus on connecting with my audience, having fun with them, and knowing that's what is going to help my client have a successful event. So it's, it's a lot of work on the front end to make sure that the easy work on the back end goes well. Okay, I'm trying to think of the next question for you. Um, I will say the last, I think this might be the last question. Um, maybe I'll have one more, but yeah. what, what causes are you passionate about? Ooh, what cause am I passionate about? There's, there's a project called Heroes and Horses. And I'm a really, really big fan of that. It is the brainchild of Micah Fink, who is a former Navy SEAL and private operator. Um, and he is a veteran and he's seen the staggering numbers of veteran suicides and the, the lack of programs and processes to help veterans kind of deprogram themselves to become citizens again. So he has a, a project called Heroes and Horses where vets go spend 41 days in the wilderness taking care of some horses. They cross mountains, they're hiking, they're, they're doing a lot of surviving. So his work is amazing to me. I respect what he's doing and how he does it and how much it helps the people that go through that program. So fairly recently, I helped, uh, I helped MC their annual gala and being able to connect with many of the people that have gone through the program gave me more and more respect for what he's doing. And I'm just over the moon happy to be a very, very small part of that as the MC for the evening. So I'm a fan of him. I'm a fan of that work. And I'm a fan of anything that genuinely, truly helps veterans because my brother was in the army. My dad was in the Air Force. His dad, my grandpa, was in the army under General Patton in World War II. So I, I come from a a strong military background family myself. So I, that's, that's something that I'm very passionate about. I guess my next question is, um, like, how do you, like, how do you read a room? I was watching one of your interviews. Um, I can't remember. It was, I think it was Molina or somebody was doing one with you a little while ago. Um, and she said it was it would be fun or we were going to have fun or something. And then I was thinking I didn't watch the whole scene, so I didn't know exactly what happened. But um, how do you how do you mind read? And does the person have to be in the room or could it be something like a virtual event? It 
definitely helps if they are in the room. Although 2020 happened and all all of my all of my live shows were canceled within the same week. So it goes from 2020 is a great year full of events, then second week week of March a whole bunch of phone calls came in saying, hey, we're sorry, we we just can't do anything. So can we put this off until later? So it just kind of just all all evaporated overnight. So then I had a lot of incentive to figure out how in the world to make it work <laughs> over over virtual shows. So it's possible. It's still there there are things that you can do in a virtual show right because it's kind of like you're sitting right across the the table from me and that gives you a perspective that you don't get anywhere else so there are some benefits to it and having said all of that i still prefer in-person experiences because the there's just something about that in the room connection that that's difficult to get anywhere else so then how you read the room um i've i've started my keynote talks my performances my workshops exactly the same way for about 15 years and what that opening does it gives me a way to gauge where the room is already what their sense of humor is what they find funny, how well read they are, everything kind of is baked into the first two or three minutes of what I do. So because I've done that hundreds and hundreds of times, I've seen the five or six ways that an audience could respond. So then by me doing exactly the same thing, that allows me to read the difference between this audience and that audience. So then when I kind of understand, okay, this is an audience that's tired from walking around out in the sun all day and they're here because it's in the shade, right? Or if I, if I was working in an outdoor event or whatever it might be, I need that measurement to know where they are so i could go meet them there then we can go somewhere else together but i need to find them first and that's how i do it well i'd like to thank jonathan for being on here today i'll make sure to send you the link so you can see the video yourself um and thanks for taking the time yeah dude thank you so much for having me on i really genuinely do appreciate it thank you